what's today's agenda like uh, manoj like shall i go with the demo followed by the okay, okay person, that lets me thank you thanks a lot yeah good morning and good evening uh, um, participants who have um, taken up this um, course uh, let me introduce myself uh, this is prasanna manikonda i have about uh, uh, 10 years of experience uh, i have been uh, working in this it uh, been uh, associated with uh, many major mnc's i have a good real time experience working on uh, aws cloud big data and uh, java gtu technologies so before we jump into the session today so we have about uh, 13 participants joining from across the globe so hope everybody are comfortable in using this uh, go to meeting webinar tool you have a kind of an option called questions uh, feel free to ask your or stop me whenever you are actually not clear or do you have any kind of a questions you can feel free to raise your hand or ask your query so that i would be very really happy to assist you for that and uh, we'll make as interactive as possible today and uh, let's start today's session so the agenda for today is something like hope uh, everybody can see my screen right do you see anybody unable to see the screen can you please raise your hand or raise your question uh, pose on the questions if nobody have any issues hope okay that's fine okay so this is the agenda we we, we are actually somebody has okay no issues thanks lakshmi sandeep uh sorry if at all if you are getting any kind of a background noise which i don't have any control uh i'll make sure that i'll minimize it i'll mute it whenever it is something it is not going above tolerable limits so today we we will walk through um this agenda uh what is big data and uh, who all can learn or what is the prerequisites in learning this particular big data related course how big is big data what are different types and varieties of uh, data that we have or uh, the use cases that we deal and what kind of business value will be uh, getting it uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, using the big data like technology and uh, first of all is it really makes any sense in terms of uh, uh, like after learning like where do we really stand in terms of uh, big data domain as a uh, uh, as a technology so there is a person called gartner i don't know how many uh, have heard about his analysis uh, we'll just walk through about uh, the market trend and the most important thing what kind of opportunities are there in big data so and other challenges that actually we have so from there on we'll actually go and uh, see what is the evolution what is the journey of uh, uh, hadoop and how hadoop is actually resolving our issues and we will see about the ecosystem and that's how it will go uh looks like we are getting lot of background noise just give me one minute time just give me one minute time sorry for the inconvenience caused one minute time please
Hi everyone, uh, this is Manoj here. So, Prasanna uh, got some issues. So, we just give me two minutes to join you back. So Janya, we are on mute. So uh, Sunna is going to join me back. Got some issue at the beginning. So give us some moment. Uh, he will join me back. Team, can you hear uh, hear me? Prasanna got some uh, issues, so he he's going to join back in few minutes. Sorry for the inconvenience. So hope you all, you can see the screen, right? Yes, we can see. Yeah. Can I, I'm just going at and resuming it. Yeah, sorry guys, sorry for the inconvenience caused. I just moved to a calm place, but still, my system got restarted. So, uh, yeah, we are just uh, about to start about uh, what is big data. So we have a lot of uh, bookish definitions coming up uh, in the internet. Uh, this is one such um, definition coming from Wikipedia. So information technology, big data is a collection of data sets so large, complex, that becomes difficult to process using on-hand EBMS existing tools. So what it clearly means is, uh, like uh, we have a lot of traditional uh, DBMS solutions like Oracle, Teradata, Hexadata. So there are many, many tools available in the market. But every, uh, every tool has their own limitations, maybe pros and cons. When you talk about data size into consideration, so every every uh, product has its own limitations, like uh, it cannot grow beyond some limit. So maybe take a teledata as an example, it cannot grow beyond 2 dB of data, it, you cannot process it. So there is a challenge and uh, the existing th and there is another uh, way of looking at is uh, so most of, because DBMS is something like a solution where it's primarily being used for structured data. It is something like where you organize uh, something like relationships uh, with uh, in, in the form of rows and columns and tables. We usually store data in DBMS tools. It's more towards like a structured data. So when you talk about real time uh, solutions or the problems that we actually have maybe I don't know like how many would have heard about the term called IOT Internet of Things 
So you would be using this kind of a jargon or seeing a lot of um, hype in the market. People usually use those keywords. What it generally it mean is there is no, nothing not only a system or existing solutions which deal with the data. There is lot many other things where uh, take some example of a device generating lots of data and you need to process it. Take any micro, uh, any smart devices, a washing machine or uh, a microwave oven. So even those devices also generate a lot of data. If at all, if you can process that particular data, so that's what they actually call it as Internet of Things, where um, any 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 device, any application, any hardware would generate a lot of data. It is up to us, if at all, if we process that data and generate some meaningful information out of it, that's where the value add comes in. So. Likewise, if it, if at all, if you collate uh, on a bigger scale, if you visualize it, so there is a scope of, there is a need of uh, processing this unstructured data. If at all, if you can process it, so there is a very big value add. There is a very big um, potential. Uh, um, currently, uh, we we are being facing this kind of an issue where the traditional database solutions are not able to process the particular data. So that's where the big data, uh, the evaluation actually started and the concept got started. Earlier to this, we used to have a data warehousing solution where we used to have a kind of a, a big data warehouse where you get um, data from various data sources and there we will do all sorts of uh, dashboards, reports, and all those things. But still, that even sits on traditional database-like solutions. Maybe they'll be using Teradata at the max, wherein uh, 2TB is your average uh, data. Beyond that, you cannot grow. So when you take statistics, it's something like 90% data it is being created. The amount of data that is getting created okay so there is a need of this kind of a solution to uh, really uh, we need to resolve it so as per the other definition coming from IBM you can see it right so there's something like it's not only uh, uh, um, traditional database solutions. The data comes from everywhere. Sensors used to gather the climate information across, as I told. So there is a lot many other devices also to generate it. So when you categorize uh, different types of data, we have about, uh, we can say structured data, we have, as we have already discussed. And we can take semi-structured data where uh, it can be transferred into XML and um, those things also get me stored. Take about unstructured data, something like in, coming from different different formats and different uh, types of uh, uh, formats, Word, PDF, Excel, text, uh, any server logs, any media logs, any streaming data. So likewise, you have many other things that can be contributing to the big data related thing. So when you talk about how big is big data, So if you, if you just uh, take uh, a kind of uh, example about how this data is getting added to the existing one. So take a, uh, some kind of a simple uh, uh, statistics on the usage of internet. So when you take the usage of internet, so there are about 3 billion people getting uh, accessed across the globe and uh, almost like the, the who will be online and something like eight zettabytes of data is being published or being accessed between those peoples and there is a growth adding to it there is a growth to the existing population being accessed I can't see the presentation 
let me just take a pause here. How about others? Is all can see my presentation or do you see some kind of a problem? I'll just stop and again reshare it. Uh, everybody other can see. Uh, I would say Saujanya, can you just uh, uh, maybe I don't know like you can restart it or not but just try to uh, refresh or re-log in to the GoTo webinar. I think others uh, can see this. I think they have no issues with others, I believe. That's fine. Okay, that's better. Just let me know when you're if you still don't cannot see it. So let me assume it. So this is how uh, we deal with like if it as we have taken an example about um, the number of people that are being accessed across the globe. So we have about three billion people being accessed, and there is a need about um, eight zettabytes of data being exchanged across it. And you take a general statistics. Um, there is a huge growth from 2010 to 2015 census. So there is something like a tremendous growth and uh, definitely we need such kind of big data related solutions to accommodate uh, to this kind of uh, growth in the technology, growth in the data. So what types of things that contribute to the big data is something like uh, any real time transactions or any type of interactions or observations. So if you, if you take the data growth like MBs to JBs, JBs to terabytes and it, how the data so it is something like uh, um, take about any transactional data where uh, we generally use uh, any uh, traditional RDBMS related solutions when you take about interactions it is something like where we have something like uh, social media so social media or social networking tools, you take something like uh, Facebook as a tool or uh, any, any, any social networking um, websites. So if you see the average trend in usage, there is a huge uh, demand and there is a huge user base uh, being exchanged across social networking sites. So observations is something like uh, where we generally deal with the uh, number of likes, dislikes, statistics. When I say observation, it will be statistics. So take something like uh, there is a definition coming up from big data. So you have different classifications. As per IBM, there is something like uh, there are mainly three Vs. They uh, consider it. Uh, there is another we call uh, veracity also. So how we, we classify it? Okay, there's something like uh, we need to have three V's. One is volume, velocity, and variety. Volume is something like the amount of data that is getting uh, added to the existing one, and velocity is something that the rate at which the data is getting populated, and the variety is something like the different types of uh, modes of data is getting being um, manipulated or being exchanged. There is something called as a veracity, uh, veracity also. This refers to uncertainty of data availability. It's something like a high availability related concept, but primarily if you, if you talk about when if at all if you want to define any kind of big data, there's something called three V's you need to consider it accordingly uh, they have defined something like, okay, the big data is comprising of, uh, you need to classify uh, the volume of data or velocity of data or variety of data. So, discussing on that point, so, when I say big data, 
So, you, as we have seen in another use case, uh, let us illustrate something on primarily focusing on social networking related websites. So, if you see about it, the average usage of adapting towards social networking related applications has immensely grown and uh, the mainly internet traffic, okay, internet traffic is most of the traffic is being exchanged over these social networking sites and there is a huge uh, demand or a huge uh, um, population that are being accessed and used across the globe. So these are all, uh, if you just summarize it, this is all something where uh, we need some kind of a big data related solution. So he, this particular slide is more talking about uh, the amount of growth or when you talk about volume. So, so you, if you can see it, it's something like 1 billion users uh, currently being uh, accessed. If you take about Twitter, 400 million. So likewise, other tools, there's a huge volume of data that is being added via social networking sites. So when take about variety of data, so it's something like you have stuck, sorry, like you have something like structured data, where the data is coming from traditional database systems or time phase data, and talk about unstructured data, unstructured data coming from any social media channel or any streaming data that as I said, maybe you can take YouTube is also one kind of example of unstructured data coming to streaming. So coming to the sensor data, the sensors as I said, it can be any device. So taking into consideration like a temperature or a microwave oven, RFIDs, QR codes, your GPS, satellite systems, never. it's something limitless, okay? I'm just giving a very small code of examples. So coming to the new data types, uh, you have uh, different uh, other, uh, maybe images, voice. So these are all part of streaming related data that is getting added. These are all different types of uh, uh, big data related concepts. When you talk about velocity, the, the, the rate at which uh, it is being accessed, you could see there's many visitors being accessed maybe synchronously or parallelly across the globe. Likewise with other social networking sites, the rate at which that is being accessed. So, is something like it it, it it really deals with uh, you know, mainly about uh, high availability and availability of data and data consistency. Even this also need to be considered because as we are, when you're dealing with a huge data, it doesn't mean that we need to process, uh, we need to take care of few um, concepts like data consistency and across. And when you talk about high availability related architecture, we need to ensure that what, whatsoever the data growth uh, we need to come we need to make sure the application is highly available at the same time we need to manage the data that is being uh, coming to the um, backend big data related um, Hadoop infrastructure so the, why should we process it uh, what kind of business value that actually we generally get uh, out of it so what kind of business value when you talk about it? So this is something kind of a, a, a illustration on how we can improve, how we can improve our, uh, um, what kind of business value means. It clearly says that by adapting towards a big data related framework or big data infrastructure. So when you take about some kind of analysis like consulting or retail or airport transportation, Maybe I'll give you a very uh, realistic example on airport trans air transportation. Maybe you take about uh, any um, transactional data or real-time traffic uh, that is being monitored by airline industry or aviation industry. So I don't know how many people know about it. Um, let us consider an international flight. 
uh, if at all if it is it took take off and it is actually um, uh, uh, going on air if you take an average trend any flight any running flight for every each one hour it generates about 20 TB of data okay it is something like very realistic. it is I don't know like how many people have ever read it. it is something who whoever is working on aviation industry would know the real-time statistics every flight for every one hour it generates 20 TB of data and every data pointer that comes out of uh, flight is very important and very keenly being monitored by airline whoever running the business because some data is related to the maintenance some data talks about uh, uh, the running statistics some data talks about uh, the performance some data talks about any inconsistencies or what is the kind of predictive analysis that we need to follow what we are supposed to do so likewise there are many many huge huge uh, because processing 20 TB of data per hour okay and generating some kind of meaningful information on the fly okay it is not only something like uh, that we will process offline it is something like we need to process on the fly and which would really help in terms of taking any kind of decisions okay take something only pertaining to maintenance okay support and maintenance so if at all if I would have got the statistics from a fight saying that okay how many parts which I would need to replace or undergo a kind of a maintenance plan in next one year because that's how where I can plan uh, the routine checkups are uh, a kind of uh, it, it, it's more something like you can take a, you can take an example of any any vehicle that actually we have we take an example of any four wheeler or a two wheeler so if at all if you know when you will go for servicing it is something like it is helping you for your planning at the same thing uh, you can plan your budget at the same time uh, if at all if you can take some kind of a maintenance plan uh, in terms of because it's not only maintenance when you take about airline industry it is something safety is the most uh, adhered followed strictly across because they should maintain some kind of a standards any violation of standards would lead to cancellations of something like they, they cannot run the business because safety is the highest priority and they need to maintain it it's something like not like uh, 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 out of 365 days they follow only 365 and uh, 364 days and they say that will compromise one day that cannot happen right and if, if that's so nobody would get into that kind of airline so likewise that is how they are actually adapting towards big data related technologies and they're actually generating some kind of uh, predictive analysis and all sorts of things which would really give some kind of business value so you take any any such things it maybe you can uh, apply the same concepts in automobile um, and it talks about uh, a telecom industries or publishing take about content management so all these things which would really give some kind of meaningful uh, decent uh, value add to the business in adapting towards any big data related solutions that are available in the market so now we have seen about what type of data what different types of data that actually contributes to big data so far <coughs> so now you see so who using big data so it is not only a specific industry it is not like whatever that I'm seeing upon the screen I'm just taking a very glimpse of um, examples so this is being widely used across 
I would say 80% of the industries which are now uh, are slowly getting migrated or slowly getting adapted towards big data related technologies. You take any any traffic control, telecom, uh, take about trading. I, I would say trading is a very big uh, uh, domain. Uh, just imagine the number of users that would actually access throughout the globe during trading hours. So how much potential solution that actually you need in order to maintain such kind of data, in order to maintain such kind of statistics, in order to get some kind of predictive analysis. It is not always the live data that is important, right? It is almost something like you need to have transactional data, historical data, and from that historical data, you need to project something like year-on-year -year report, week-on-week -week report, month-on-month -month report, day-on-day -day report. So depending upon the many factors, definitely a customer would take a decision whether to go buy or sell his uh, trades. So, if, if you can just uh, visualize it, so there is a huge uh, potential uh, growth in terms of uh, adapting towards big data. So, as I said, uh, Gartner, Gartner is something like a, a kind of, he is a basically a business uh, uh, researcher or a consultant where he, he does most of his uh, um, he is very popular in terms of publishing this kind of magic quadrants. So you can just go and uh, type uh, Gartner magic quadrant on any any domain, okay? Any domain. Take about uh, uh, airline industry or take about um, tools. So as per his protection, many, sorry, many, many, um, so there is something like he, he would get some kind of reports uh, from uh, many of uh, these uh, companies depending upon uh, their usage and surveys he will publish this kind of magic quadrant which would eventually say something like okay uh, what kind of tools which are actually more popular so the how you should read this particular diagram is something like leaders challengers, niche players, and visionaries. So this is how you need to check. It is something like anti-clockwise, you need to check it. So if we can just calculate it, if we can just see a kind of average view on it, uh, there are many tools which are actually being widely implementing uh, at the back end as a, a big data. And you can take some one good example as Tableau one such tool is actually being used. And underlying, you will use all these big data related infrastructure which are eventually being used. So this is something uh, uh, I would say um, more interesting. So I don't like how many, how many are very much interested in knowing this. So this is what actually uh, maybe uh, for the benefit of all, I'll just maximize it. So. If it, if we can see uh, what really why should we learn this course or what what is the potential of learning big data and where do I see more openings or where do I see more uh, uh, what kind of industries that are being hiring this kind of big data and this particular statistics I have taken it from 2014 statistics from Google. So if you can just see this kind of uh, um, diagram, so there's a huge potential, okay? I, I would say almost all top 20 industries are hiring, uh, they need kind of, uh, uh, maybe they call it as a big data scientists or infrastructure uh, management uh, services who really uh, go into big data related uh, infrastructures or ecosystems. So top 20 industries are actually hiring big data. So you need to just calculate yourself and you, you just visualize it where do you stand and uh, with an average five years or with relevant three years to four years experienced maybe it, it can grow from three years minimum of three years to five years 
relevant to big data related technologies or exposure towards big data related technologies. This is how uh, the average trend of salary would really give and uh, touch wood probably uh, I have taken the real statistics. Uh, it, it may actually vary by 10% but uh, most of the times it is something standard. You can compare yourself, you can place your resumes after uh, taking this kind of a training and you can uh, you can just give a simple search on Google or Dice or Indeed or something. Any job sites where you just give uh, something like uh, what kind of salaries I can expect uh, with this kind of niche skills. So you somewhere land about uh, 100k average. So uh, it's something like it, it is very good to see all top 10 um, maybe big Big, big employers, uh, big data employers. We can say as per 2014 statistics, you can see all uh, big companies, all big MNCs who are actually adapting or uh, taking uh, big data related scientists. Uh, it's a huge in demand. So we have so far discussed about varieties of data, classification of data and opportunities that are being in the market. So what we have visualized so far is something like uh, there is a huge potential, there is a growth about uh, unstructured data you would say and we need to understand how exactly we can process that unstructured data and how we can generate some kind of meaningful information out of it which would really give a kind of business value add. So that is what is the challenge currently in which where the traditional any data warehousing solutions or database solutions are not able to withstand the uh, with the kind of data size that actually it is actually growing and the velocity at which the, the data is growing and uh, different forms of data, different classification of data is actually being generated across it. So that is where um, the kind of challenges that actually it has. It is, if we can just bot down into kind of a points. So we need to have, there are a lot many challenges I would say. We can say something like, how will we, how do we capture the data? For example, as I told, for an air, taking about airline traffic. So as I said, for every one hour, it's a two, 20 TB of data that is being generated. It It is something like you need to have a system where you need to store the data, right? It is something not always processing it. We need to store the data. So you, how much how much TB of data that we actually we will store it. So I don't know how many people you are aware of it. There is a bottleneck on an operating system as well. It is not always something like we'll be, we, we use tools. It is something like you need to have a file system in place where which would which would facilitate you to store the data. You need to have even a file system or you need to have an operating system or you need to have a kind of a framework in place which would make you facilitate to store it. Okay, so something like you need to have a kind of a tool which would organize your unstructured data. It's something like how do we capture it? Curation, storage, searching, sharing, transferring, analyzing, presenting or publishing graphs. These are all, if at all, if you can put down, these are all potential challenges currently we have which would be resolving them with the help of, uh, maybe we, could, we, we would say that uh, with the use of uh, any big data related solutions uh, that is currently available in the market. So when you call about big data, so there is a, a framework called Hadoop. So Hadoop is one such uh, uh, technology that is being widely implemented across and that is a backbone of big data in resolving all the potential challenges that actually we have seen so far. So when you talk about challenges, so 
we have different approaches okay so we, we, we can we can we can see how we are actually uh, what kind of approaches actually we see so you take about a traditional approach where we have a computer to store and process the big data so all the data is actually getting stored on your traditional database and we'll be using some kind of a relational database here this particular works very well when your data is something uh, you have some kind of a challenges on uh, the real-time uh, tra uh, I mean, uh, transactional data using relational database if for huge amounts of data it is really tedious to process such data because your traditional database solution will not support so there is something like uh, uh, before a Hadoop uh, as a technology uh, came out so there is something called Google which actually they have uh, designed this map reduce um, uh, API or a paradigm they call it as uh, even Google actually has a kind of a big, a big table concept and other things and Google is the first guy who, who Google and other open source plus, uh, providers who actually started looking into this problem to resolve it. So as part of the time, uh, Google actually came up with a kind of approach called MapReduce. And for all information, like uh, something like uh, uh, when you take Hadoop as a technology, Hadoop actually is a framework wherein it actually implements a similar map reduce paradigm how Google has actually um, invented the solution called uh, came up with an approach called map reduce so this algorithm divides the tasks into small parts and assign those parts to many computers connected over the network and collects the results from the final result data set so what it actually does internally is something like when you take about map reduce on a very high level map reduce programming is something like uh, we can say distributed parallel processing adding to it distributed parallel processing using commodity hardware when you say commodity hardware what it really means is even today, before a big data got evolved, we still have systems like which would actually help us in doing distributed processing or parallel processing, multi multi threading processing. So we have all those environments, but still, due to the growth of data, we still need some other system which would really solve all the big data related challenges. So what this MapReduce API would do is for running such kind of parallel processing related framework or the environment, we don't need any specialized tools or infrastructure. It's a basic thing. It's something like if you at all if you have desktops, maybe a high-end system with a decent hardware because if you take I think uh, buying a 1 TB hard disk is not so big deal now because uh, the when you take about the pricing strategy buying a memory is not a big constraint for any kind of enterprise it is it is not about cost associated towards buying the hardware it is it is something towards how do we store and retrieve it or how do we process that is more important here because the it is something like we have gone to an age where cost for memory the cost associated for buying a hardware it is not so big deal Okay, so just take an average statistics like a, 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 a kind of a shift from a floppy drive from last 10, drive, 10 years I don't know I think uh, because I personally seen uh, where we have used floppies when we are actually doing first project assignments during my graduation days 
and with the same eye, I have seen uh, the various devices that I have been using it for the past 10 years. Initially, I have used uh, pen, pen drives. Uh, initially, I have used floppies. Maybe then uh, slowly we have started adapting to CDs, from CDs to DVDs, from DVDs to flash drives, from flash drives, it's ranging from 5 to MB. Now, even we have seen, no wonder we have seen simple flash drives with small uh, finger uh, having 1 TB or 2, 2 TB. So, even if you take about cost factor, now we are getting about 1 TB pen drive in hardly about uh, maybe I think I would say $20 or $50 at the max. So that's how uh, 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 the trend, that's how uh, the innovation actually uh, being uh, uh, carried away. Now the biggest problem is something like uh, how are we going to store the data or how are we going to process that kind of data. So for that, uh, we need a kind of a distributor processing system, a centralized system which would actually does all this help for us. But definitely if you take a traditional existing distributed processing systems, there's a huge licensing cost, there's a huge infrastructure need to be in place in order to set up such kind of processing system. But no, Google has innovated it and they came up with a kind of a MapReduce API uh, which eventually does something like with the help of traditional desktop or a high-end systems it's not like servers okay just like traditional uh, desktop systems even if, if, if at all if you make them available over a LAN with the help of a switch or a, a traditional hub still you can come up uh, uh, you can still process uh, you can do big data related processing, you can do distributed processing and uh, you can come up with some kind of approach like MapReduce where we will divide a huge big task into small small parts and each part is runs on different different hardware and after processing that data comes to one system which would eventually do all sorts of collation and then it will give you the result. So with zero process, with zero licensing costs, with no big infrastructure, we would still resolve big data related problems. So this is the uh, the kind of uh, uh, evaluation started, and Google has actually innovated the MapReduce uh, algorithm, and by basing on those footsteps, uh, there is a technology called Hadoop got innovated, and the Apache Foundation. Open Source Foundation actually started this kind of analysis and they have innovated a technology called Hadoop. And Hadoop is a technology where it actually uses MapReduce as its backbone while processing any big data or while using any kind of ecosystem related tools. So here I would like to take a small break and then we'll just continue to some extent as we're almost uh, heading to the uh, target time. I just give you one minute or two minutes time. Uh, I'll pause here. Uh, just let me know if, uh, if at all if you have any kind of a queries. If if at all if anybody have any queries, we can uh, resolve it here, or we'll just try to move. Any questions so far? I would say not boring, I would say something like it is very a poor response I would say, nobody has, nobody is actually stopping me, no questions coming up, what I would assume is something like is everything is fine with everybody or is something like uh, uh, I'm bombarding with more information and uh, nobody is uh, getting out of it. So I'm getting a response from Sandeep. How far we need programming skills? Do we need to know any programming language? So yes, to answer your questions, 
Hadoop, when, you, when I say uh, big data, it is something like more towards uh, we'll be uh, using Hadoop as a backbone. When I say Hadoop as a technology, maybe I'll just go to one screen ahead and uh, explain you people. So this is how typically uh, a Hadoop infrastructure would actually has an underlying ecosystem related frameworks. Uh, many of Hadoop related technologies, it supports uh, any Java JT related thing, it supports .NET, it supports scripting languages, it supports uh, Python script, it, it supports big it, it supports PIG concept as well. PIG, PIG, there is a scripting, different scripting technology. It's more towards uh, people who are actually coming from administrative background. Uh, Yusuf, I'll just come to you before I let me complete the answer. Uh, it is something like it is not specific to technology. Hadoop supports, maybe I'll just bring up that point of a slide. Okay, I think I missed the butler slide. Okay. So Hadoop supports uh, It supports I mean, uh, Java, .NET. Yeah. So which are the scripting languages that are good for support is something like PHP, Python, Perl, Ruby, Bash, and all those things. And it even also supports, uh, maybe let me open up documentation, that's the best, better thing. Nothing to do Maybe I'll take it as uh, I'll take it as a homework and I'll give it. Better. So what I would like to bottom down is something like it supports uh, Java, it supports .NET, it supports scripting languages as well uh, in developing map reduce programs. Uh, if at all, if you correlate it, something like people who are actually coming from um, a Java JT background or a .NET background, uh, Hadoop supports uh, API. Uh, developing map reduce programs uh, from these tech using those technologies and people who are coming from administrator background maybe from system administration or Unix administration or any sort of administration related background who really would like to convert uh, who, like to, who, who would like to enhance their skills using big data so if at all if we are there comfortable on writing bash scripts or Perl or Ruby or Python. So even those languages are also being supported for, by Hadoop. So you can still develop my previous programs using those languages as well. So that way people who are actually coming from administrative background can adapt to big data and develop my previous programs. So, and not only this, there is the, the innovation of this Hadoop or Big Data. You have some real-time uh, uh, tools uh, which would eventually generate those map reduce programs for you automatically using forward engineering. Maybe one such tool is Talent. So, Talent is a tool where you, there is no need for you to do any sort of coding. 
everything is a pretty much drag and drop concept with very very minimal uh, configuration uh, we would able to develop all those map reduce programs by default those programs almost like 70 to 80 percent of all the potential enterprise use cases they have already created a design all that we need to do is we need to drag that component do some basic configuration we are done so there is nothing like we, we would be creating that nothing like we'll be uh, uh, using any kind of technologies but underlying the tool would generate the those map reduce programs at the back end so that's where uh, I see uh, there is no uh, necessity I would say uh, which uh, which would really uh, helpful in terms of bottleneck where because I don't know Java I should not learn big data it is not something like language constraint it all something like from which domain actually you're coming from if you're coming from a programming background yes with the help of Java or .NET you should uh, should be able to good in terms of writing map reduce no if at all if I if I say that I'm coming from a system administrative background yes we would be using some kind of a scripting languages no if I, I'm not coming from either from a system administration nor from a programming yes there are some kind of tools which are readily available in the market where they use map reduce programs but most of the times those programs are already being generated automatically by the selected by some kind of a UI that actually that comes up so hope that answers many of the queries right so people who are not coming from any of those backgrounds but you see there is a growth of technology there is a need of big data related technology or you can foresee that okay if I learn big data definitely I would see that okay I can be placed or uh, there's lot many opportunities that are currently available over the market yes by adapting to any kind of tool which actually supports big data as I said one such tool is uh, um, maybe I would say talent uh, I would say tableau so some some ready-made solutions currently in the market which actually supports big data those tools for for that just you need to have a kind of a basic overview on what uh, what is a map address program and how it typically looks like and what are the support what are the configuration which I need to give from the tool perspective in order to process a kind of a big data so that's how you you need to uh, come about hope I have answered uh, many of the questions I think Shoba let's come to Shoba so who are in BI development which tool which tool from big data will be useful when I say big data Shoba it is something like maybe I'll for the benefit of all I'll just keep it everybody can see this notepad I think uh, the benefit of this tool is something like uh, all the questions I can view it but I you, you most of them you cannot let me do this way hope everybody can see this notepad right so for uh, BA development which tool so I would say undoubtedly talent is one such tool so currently even tableau so these are currently very hot in the market and they are being widely implementing a big data related ecosystems uh, data sources and everything so I would say these are the tools and there are some other tools coming up from Pivotal there are some tools coming from Hortonworks there are some tools coming from Cloudera so out of which uh, if you just take Gartner uh, basic uh, analysis into the consideration what are the different tools I would say talent tableau this takes uh, very good uh, um, like uh, they, the, they are being widely implemented across by many of the enterprises so how difficult for a person okay this is something very good question let me answer this okay 
So there's a question coming up from Lakshmi Narsimha. So how difficult it would be for a person with other programming languages? So when I say uh, uh, other programming languages, it's all about uh, person to person. It is there is no hard and fast calculator which would actually tell us in how many days you would learn this. It's always how, how much, uh, how uh, what is your uh, the rate at which uh, you are adapting to the new technology. Uh, maybe I would say your brain power or how well you will digest what I'm saying. But on a practical note. It's not about tech. We are we are only talking about uh, the way at which the technology is being implemented. There is no bar on uh, a specific techno specific programming. It is not limited to only Java, only .NET, only scripting. So it has many uh, supported frameworks or supported technologies being implementing this Hadoop. So it is something like whichever that you are comfortable or in what is a strong area so you can uh, <coughs> primarily focus on the particular area so that the rate at which <coughs> you learn the subject would be more faster or you can apply more use cases uh, pertaining to your domain hope that answers it so what do you recommend should we learn Java Python or others okay Okay, so when you ask this kind of a question, so again I would like to come back to you. It, it's all about the comfortness here and the level of knowledge that actually we already have in those supported languages. If a fresher, if a person like a fresher who would really comes to me and say, I want to learn big data or I want to learn Hadoop, then I would say, uh, with the kind of uh, uh, the technology, I would say either Java and .NET is a better choice. Why I would say Java and .NET is a better choice is something like it is. Uh, it is very viable discussion because you could say that Java is almost something like a technology which is something every person from a kind of a software or uh, uh, from an IT industry perspective should learn. Okay, so when I say programming concept, uh, if you are learning newly, then I would recommend either one of them because every, uh, I mean, both the languages support OOPS concepts and uh, definitely yes, there is a chance for you to customize the behavior. There are some special use cases where we need to do some kind of a special customizations for user handling requirements. So. Uh, learning Java or .NET would really make us comfortable in terms of developing source uh, customizations or plugins wherever it is necessary for complex scenarios. And also, because this language supports OOPS concepts, no matter what, it is not only always big data. Even you can develop your own custom components. You can develop your own um, um, reusable components using just like technologies because uh, using scripting or using uh, using Python and all those things there is some kind of challenges you would be facing but for a fresher like people which for all if you don't have any knowledge any background and you would like to start from scratch I would recommend uh, better, better than exploring others Java or dot net would really helpful so are we covering those tools applicable for the third category people who don't have development experience or okay very good so are we covering those tools applicable for the third category of people who don't have either development experience or administrative experience yes we will cover to an extent talent if time permits, I would bring up Tableau, but I don't uh, promise it. But for sure, different talent, I will demonstrate it. Because uh, this particular course is something, uh, maybe I don't know how many people you would know about uh, the curriculum that actually you would like to go ahead. 
so this is the topics I would say this is the topics yeah so these are the topics that are being implemented being covered in this course so we'll be covering uh, app, I mean Hadoop framework 1 to advanced map review programs with uh, all sorts of uh, uh, concepts and we'll cover pig we'll cover hive and we'll cover OZ plus Hadoop project we'll cover real-time use cases and we'll cover some kind of a end-to-end -end flow about a project so adding to this tools I would be demonstrating using talent so I will uh, take a traditional example where we'll be using uh, Hadoop uh, HDFS file system and processing a big data uh, using uh, either Java program or a big program a map reduce program in uh, demonstrating it same thing I would demonstrate using Hadoop I may mean, say same thing I will uh, demonstrate using talent as a tool hope that answers it so should we must uh, support a technology before uh, I think um, maybe sorry to answer the ask you uh, Lakshmi Narsimha maybe I'll, I'll call this Narsimha so what is the overall experience that actually you have uh, Narsimha so more than 10 years right so you, you're coming from which background is something like uh, Java or programming or you're coming from Oracle okay that's good so when you say Oracle as a technology uh, I think uh, if at all if you heard about uh, tools like uh, uh, I think there's a tool called Exadata uh, it's something like out of box solution that Oracle actually recommends for most of the customers who really need of uh, big data implementations but still so uh, when I say reporting as a solution you have uh, tools like OBIE and uh, maybe HCM so these tools uh, they use only for the sake of uh, developing reports okay customizable reports or all sorts of dashboards and reporting concepts but in terms of uh, big data compatibility even to an extent Oracle also support it okay just just go through uh, the product chain in Oracle you you definitely see some kind of products coming from Oracle umbrella which should support Hadoop and other technologies but when I say you're coming from an Oracle or from a database background what make you interesting here is if at all if you would learn some concept maybe tool a, a tool like uh, uh, mm, so when you say Oracle Fusion or an Oracle ERP solution in conjunction with a data warehousing solution okay take about data warehousing solution so many of the customers who are really adapting to big data they will use some kind of a tool so when I say tools they are currently all the enterprises currently in the market whoever have implemented Informatica as their uh, uh, um, backend ETL solution they are slowly adapting towards talent as a tool where they are replacing ETL and backend data warehousing using uh, Hadoop or underlying ecosystem related frameworks like Hive, HBase and all and uh, traditional reporting from uh, take about BO reports or crystal reports or any other reports or any ERP solutions actually supports reporting they are slowly moving towards uh, either click view or tableau so that the licensing cost actually comes down and uh, as they're coming up from as they support open source frameworks the customizations are pretty much simple and configurable 
and easy to maintain and they scale up as per the demand so that is where you see more value add comes about it and that's where you need to focus it so I would I don't say talent is the only one tool that is available in the market but there are many tools if you take trend I would say talent uh, with my observation that is being widely implemented across most of the major MNCs and enterprises. So will you teach Tableau in giving the table? Okay. Mm, yeah, when I uh, to answer this question, this particular training I would say I can give some kind of a um, scope or in scope or something. I would not stress more towards uh, uh, the features of Lend and Tableau, but yes, I would give you some kind of uh, comparisons, comparison, and uh, in traditional approach, using HDFS plus a MapReduce program. I would give demo on similar concept on ta using talent but Tableau if time permits I would encourage it but uh, I, I would say talent uh, I would definitely promise in terms of delivering it even Tableau I need to learn sorry to say this I am not a Tableau expert sorry my question is valid will big data allow uh, helps testing background yeah this is something a very repetitive question coming up uh, 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 in any one of the sessions okay so to answer this question I think it's coming from Sandeep well big data helps testing background as well yes there are couple of tools maybe I'll give you some kind of a use case then you visualize it uh, so when you take a very high level so let us consider you have uh, one PB of data okay one PB TB after TB PB after PB there's something called as a ZB zettabyte so let us consider you are processing some 10 PBs of data okay some 10 PB 10 PBs of data Definitely it will take some considerable amount of hours to process it, okay? It takes about maybe with uh, average speed uh, into consideration and take some high speed systems. It takes some 10 hours to deliver or process it. But eventually you need to write your program in such a way that it would process it, right? Whatever the meaningful information that you're expecting, it should deliver so after 10 hours after processing if you are not getting the output that as you expected definitely it is a waste of 10 hours effort 10 hours of usage okay if, if you are uh, deploying your hardware on a cloud like infrastructure your usage is also into consideration in terms of costing factor right so the your 10 hours of CPU usage is gone for a toss if at all if your programming is not good and if a program is not delivering what you are expected. So for those scenarios, yes, for big data, even Hadoop has some kind of a testing infrastructure or tools which are very much useful for testing. There is a scope and demand for these people as well who are having coming from testing as a background there are some tools testing tools for big data which are actually support Hadoop framework they take some subset of data out of 10 PB they take some subset and run that specific MapReduce program and do some kind of testing all sorts of test cases before running it on the live system because this way they save cost, cost factor 
uh, effectively utilizing time and third before we go, before we implement it we will do some kind of testing in house testing in running those uh, uh, huge uh, payloads so definitely yes for the people who are coming from testing background still you people actually uh, i don't say uh, uh, it 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 actually need, it doesn't need some kind of a testing yes it needs some testing and there are some specific tools which are also helpful in terms of doing uh, uh, testing uh, uh, which supports uh, Hadoop tools. Hope I would say I have answered most of their queries. Any example? Any example testing tools? Uh, so far I would say Selenium also supports Hadoop's infrastructure I believe, right? Selenium supports Selenium supports Hadoop. Selenium is one such uh, very good tool currently available in the market, open source, uh, which actually supports Hadoop as well. I think many people who are actually coming from testing background would have heard about a tool called Selenium. So even that supports Hadoop. And even adding to that, there are many other tools also available which I cannot uh, give directly handy because those, those are not handy with me. Uh, you can just try to just go some kind of uh, research in the internet, you should be able to see it. But still, I would say uh, th there is a scope of even uh, people who are coming from testing background also has a scope of learning big data uh, or the awareness that actually they should have in terms of doing what kind of special testing scenarios that we need to do before we running a, a huge payload. Uh, okay, which tool? I think to answer the question from Shoba, for people who are in BA development, which tool from Big Data will be useful? I think I have already answered your query. Uh, Talent, I would say one such tool, which is widely being implemented across many of the major MNCs. So any other questions left over, feel free to question so that we will definitely uh, answer it. I think we have taken ahead a lot of time. Uh, uh, I would say definitely we will, uh, uh, with this kind of flow, uh, we will catch up every day one hour and uh, we will start uh, walking through it. Uh, from my side, I would really um, make sessions as interesting as possible and uh, I'll make it more example oriented. We will go with more demos so that we will definitely walk through it. Can you please send the recording of this session? Uh, I think Nasima, I think uh, if you can log into this IT eLearn website, uh, I think uh, Manoj would really help or you can just drop an email to sales at the rate uh, elearn.com that would really respond back to your query. I think for sure you will be having access towards it. You uh, just uh, see some help coming on the portal. You will definitely access uh, this recording. Are you sure latest would be available? Yes, 100%. I think uh, Manoj would be the right point of contact. Manoj, I think probably you can just answer this query. Are you still online? I think Manoj is not there. That's okay. I'll make sure that uh, whoever has uh, uh, logged in today, uh, I'll ask Manoj to respond, Manoj to share across uh, uh, the instructions in terms of uh, viewing this video today. Uh, sorry, I, I was on mute, uh, Prasanna. So, surely we'll uh, email them uh, the link of this video, which will be uh, hosted on our website. Okay. That would really help. Uh, yeah. You're welcome, uh, Naisima. And uh, I think most of the people would have been known about how we deliver the course. So 
मनोज वुड लाइक टू टेक इट सॉरी प्रसन्ना नो लाइक हाउ मेनी सेशंस आर एक्चुअली वी अलोविंग फॉर द um everyone and how are we going with paid mode or something can you just yes uh, so uh, including today we have one more session tomorrow that is uh, free anyone can join uh, and uh, after day 3 means uh, including day 3 it will be a paid uh, sessions so it will start from uh, 8th of this jan so day 3 will be up for paid members only so only day 1 and day 2 are free thank you so uh, so that's about it uh, people who really feel um, uh, I, i would say like it's all up to you people um, we would uh, we would definitely promise on few things like uh, we will deliver the training as per the best standards as possible and we will make sure that we will walk through as real time examples as possible and we will walk through the tools currently available in the market and uh, we'll ensure that and i think people who are actually uh, the for the paid members uh, we will be uh, uh, you will have access to all these videos including the uh, real time examples that actually we deliver in the terms of training you have those things available on our learning management system where you can view them or we can also download those examples so it's all about you people to decide and uh, uh, you can uh, come back to us we really await for your response and uh, we'll take it further so any other questions for today uh, are, are, are we are good for today so that we can wind up because we are already ahead of time we're almost like half an hour ahead of time so uh, sh- shall we wind up for today i don't see any questions coming up from any of the associates who have joined today I think we have got a green signal from Shobha. Thank you. Thanks for joining. So I see many of the people are not responding. I think Sandeep has responded. Thank you. Saujanya has responded. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I see some very low response from Shri Devi. I don't see any uh, uh, a ping from Shri Devi. yeah i i don't want to pin find everybody so i i would say like it's feel feel free to uh, pose your questions anytime we would definitely help you in answering your queries so once again uh, i really uh, uh, welcome you all onto the board uh, i hope you the session is interesting and we'll continue the same in a pace for the next following sessions as well and for the other formalities please contact uh, visit our website and uh, you can uh, get in touch with manoj who would be uh, coordinating for you people in sharing the recorded sessions yeah and once again uh, <laughs> yeah thank you sir thank you for your feedback uh, and a very very happy new year for everybody and uh, i wish you a very prosperous new year So let's see uh, see you all in the next session thank you thank you all